Let's talk about the input feature. In order to do that, I'd like to first recap a bit about variables. So variables, as I may have said before in a couple of previous videos, are going to be uh, temporarily stored data for the purpose of informing app logic of some sort. And again, this transcends far beyond AppSheet. Uh, virtually every programming language gives you very easy mechanisms to declare and modify variables. Now, the input feature is a uh, mechanism within certain types of actions that is going to allow us to leverage uh, the setting of variables. Uh, that is not exclusively what it does. Uh, so let's let's talk briefly about it, its two main use cases. So the first is very straightforward and is probably the most commonly used implementation of this feature, which is to create a brief pop-up window that allows you to modify column values within one row of data. Our next use case is going to be dynamic cross-table translation. At least that's what I'll call it. And essentially what this allows you to do is leverage an input action that you've created on one table and to be able to modify that through an action on a set of rows and supply a dynamic value from your current row. Now, it's hard to, uh, to overstate the benefit of this sort of action, especially whenever you juxtapose it with the... Uh, its its predecessor or or the former counterpart, which is how you would accomplish the same type of action uh, through a different means. So previously in AppSheet, before the input function or input feature ever was released, if you wanted to update a uh, a tape, sorry, I would say I think it's a parent record or an unrelated table record going from a different table it was quite complicated. Essentially what you would have to do is you would have to supply an update timestamp on or, or something of like nature. You had to signify some way to, for AppSheet to know the record that you just updated. And then you would run an action on a set of rows that would dynamically set uh, the val or one or more column values in a different table based on a query of the table that you just updated, you generally have to order it by, you know, some sort of numeric or timestamp value and then retrieve the top index. It was a mess and you had to supply that query for every column that you wanted to modify within that row of data. So it was a little bit exhausting and the input feature cuts down your time and the complexity of development for this sort of feature significantly. So again, what this is going to enable us to do is dynamically supply values into another table through this input feature. So let's talk setup for a second. And I will show, the, show you this in the editor as well, but I have it in a slide. So essentially what you're gonna do, first step is create an action. This action is going to be for uh, the table that you intend to modify the action type that you're going to select is to set the values of columns in this row. And then inside the, the column, and you can supply multiple columns in the example that I have in, in this slide, I'm only modifying one column, but you could theoretically do as many as you want. You're going to essentially copy and paste this following syntax. So you'll have an input dot and then as a column name, you're, you're going to supply an arbitrary variable name. It does not matter what you call this, um, but you're, you're treating this like it's a variable that you're setting. So in many cases, if I'm going to be modifying a project like we are in this case, I'm calling this variable current project. So underscore input dot current project and you act as if they're both columns. It's like a dereference. Then what you'll do is you will configure the inputs in the advanced sections and you'll be able to add your variable and the data type that is connected to that. Uh, one thing that I would, I would say here, one additional note is I, I would highly recommend you just naming these inputs the same thing as what you put in column values. 
Last note, like I mentioned, is that you can optionally use this in an action on a set of rows to dynamically fill this value as opposed to filling it through a pop-up window. So let's go ahead and jump into the editor and we'll discuss how you can do this in real time. Okay, so here in the app sheet editor, I'd like to show you briefly how you can create an input action and then also how you can link that action in an action on a set of rows and to, to trigger it dynamically. So first things first, let's jump into this input action that I've created. I call it input project. It makes it easier to search whenever you're trying to figure out how you wanna modify it or how you want to link it in with another action. So the table that I'm gonna be modifying is our user variables table. Again, the type of action that you're going to be using is the set the values of, of some columns in this row. And again, the value that I'm giving for our project column is following that same syntax. You need in brackets underscore input dot current project. So you are uh, retrieving the current project variable or column from the user input. Next, in the advanced section, you will hit that drop down, and then you're going to supply a value. So initially it will look like this. You're going to hit add. You supply the name, which should correspond with the value that you that you put in the column values there. So I'm gonna put that. This is a base type of text and then the default value. Now, I have never been able to get this function to work, but theoretically, I believe that the input feature should allow you to supply a default value uh, so that you can, whenever a user opens up this pop-up, it already has a value in there. Again, I haven't been able to get that to work. I would just suggest using an initial value in that column if you want a default value. Okay, once that is created, you can then create an action on a set of rows if you wanna fill that dynamically. So if you don't fill it dynamically, I wanna show you how that works real quick. Let's jump in here to a view. You'll have your input button. If you select that, again, it's going to create a pop-up window here. And let me move my face so that you can actually see where to save that. So a quick pop-up form only allowing you to modify the columns that you include in your input action and then you save your changes. Now if you don't want to supply your value through a pop-up there is one other mechanism as I have alluded to and I'm going to show you how you would create that. So I have in my project table again the input action is on the user variable table so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna supply a value in the user variable table from the project table. So I'm creating a new action on the project table. This action is going to execute an action on a set of rows. It is going to affect the user variables table. It is going to affect my record within the user variables table. And the action that I, so, that I would select here is the input project action. Now, whenever I do this, it's actually gonna add this additional section, which you couldn't see at first. So let me modify this to be something else. Okay, so whenever I change it to be input project, you'll see that it gives me this option. With these inputs, you're going to do something. So I'm going to add my current project input that I would like to modify. And then I'm going to supply it with a value. Now I can do any column value from this row. I could do uh, any dynamic, function or expression that would be helpful in my use case. So if I want to concatenate multiple columns for my current row, I can do that. In this case, I want to supply a my primary key of the current row, which for the user variable table will act kind of like a foreign key. All right, boom. Okay, and what that allows me to do is whenever I select a project row, it's actually going to fill my project 
column in the user table with that value. So currently it's field install two. Let me go back. I'll select field install one, and you'll notice that it changed. You'll also notice that whenever I modified it, there was, an, uh, there was a number that was indicated at the top right over the resync button, indicating that a data change had been made. So that is a quick rundown on the input feature. Again, I think it's extremely, extremely helpful, especially if you're trying to dynamically supply values across tables.